Ahoy hoy neighborinos, just letting you know that you can pre-order my book Simpson Secret on Amazon today. Their link is in the description below. When The Simpsons first hit our screens, the Bouvier twins started off as the typical sister-in-law stereotypes, with their only purpose in life to rile up our poor protagonist Homer. Am I wrong? Or did it just get fatter in here? To crudely sum them up, they were Marge's less attractive chain-smoking sisters. They lived to waste people's time at the DMV and be the constant thorn in their brother-in-law's behind. They almost blur into one entity, wearing practically the same outfit, hair blow dried slightly differently, and their gravelly voices are pretty much impossible to tell apart. <laughs> And for a long while, that was it. They'll ruin Homer's night, insult him, and then leave. No real character development, except for finding out that they wore really huge cone bras. I said it before and I'll say it again. Ay, caramba! But slowly, as a long-running TV show would allow, we start to see developments in their character. Patty's main moment was her breaking out of her lifetime of celibacy to announce she is a lesbian, which is great, one of the first openly gay main characters. But still, she lacks other details to really allow us to connect with her. But Selma? Selma is completely different, perhaps owning one of the deepest arcs in the series. So to help me out with this video, I'm enlisted the help of May to Express. He is an amazing YouTuber who has done some really fantastic and enlightening video essays on The Simpsons. I was actually recently a guest over on his channel where we looked at the show's most thought provoking episode, which I've linked down in the description below. So after this video, please go and show his channel some love and go and subscribe. Thanks Lydia. Let's start by talking about how Patty holds Selma back, as I feel Patty is a bad influence on Selma, and she is perhaps the biggest reason for her misery. There are a few times where this idea comes up. In Principal Charming, it opens with Selma and Patty attending a co-worker's wedding. Selma then has a flashback showing how she actually had a chance to date the groom, but Patty scared him off. Fed up of being alone in her 40s, Selma begs Marge to help her find a husband. Please, Marge, help me find a man before it's too late. Placing herself in a vulnerable position for the sake of love, a trait we will see time and time again. Marge asks Homer to help Selma find a date, but he struggles. After being summoned for a parent-teacher meeting, Homer learns that Skinner is single, and so invites him to dinner. I'd be delighted. Excellent. When Skinner arrives, Homer accidentally introduces him to Patty instead of Selma. But it's too late. Skinner falls for her brash, blunt personality. Marvelous. Just marvelous. Which is understandable, seeing as he's surrounded by women of a similar temperament. I'm sick of this house and I'm sick of you. And so Freud's theory of parent attraction takes course. Oh! Don't be stupid. No. Oh. Uh, sorry. Anyway, like Skinner at dinner, we have neglected talking about Selma. After being ignored by the principal, Selma feels even worse about her marriage prospects. Skinner invites Patty for a date, but is dismissive. So Selma encourages Patty to go on her first date in 25 years, warning it may be her last chance to marry. Showing that Selma, even though lonely herself, doesn't want her sister to suffer. Far different from how Patty basically shuns Selma's love prospects in the cafeteria. Selma even tells Patty to describe the date to her in detail, just to feel something from it. Tell me every filthy detail. Skinner soon enlists Bart's help to persuade Patty to marry him. At the same time, Homer arranges a date between Barney and Selma. And let's face it, she opens the door to a smelly drunk who hasn't seen the outside of Moe's in years. But the fact she is so desperate for love, whereas Patty is so nonchalant, really shows how much they differ. Patty declines Skinner's proposal, using her sister Bond as an excuse. This is before rescuing Selma from her date with Barney. This may be perceived as a sister's forever moment, but I can't help but feel a bit bad about it. Patty is obviously fine and happy living with her sister in their apartment and working at the DMV, but Selma craves for more and will go to extreme lengths to get it. She didn't have to go on a date with Barney, but she did. 
She had to practically beg Patty to go out with Skinner, therefore showing their differing personalities, thus proving that twins in looks doesn't always correlate to twins in the mind. It's also very evident that when Selma is away from Patty, she almost acts like a different person. When together, she hides behind her relationship with her sister to intimidate, bully, and belittle, therefore mirroring Patty's behavior. You are a loser, Homer, and we're winners. You gotta learn that. As a pair, they have advised Marge to leave Homer repeatedly, even going as far to kidnap him to stop their sister remarrying Homer to make up for Reverend Lovejoy's expired license. During the kidnap, they sadistically torture Homer. Their cruelty is also evident when Homer faked his demise to get out of work. Pat and Summer literally showed up holding a tombstone engraved with Homer J. Simpson, we are richer for having lost him. There is no doubt that together, these chicks are pretty scary. But we are also welcome to many scenes where Selma lets down her walls. Why do you want to have a baby so bad? I got a lot of love to give. These include deep meaningful talks with Lisa in her bedroom opening up her vulnerability, crying on the bonnet of her car, or while being consoled by Marge over yet again another failed marriage. But these emotions aren't all sad. I loved seeing the purity of her happiness when blessed with an adopted daughter. We rarely get this vulnerability from Patty, making it feel more and more evident that Selma's cruelty is a facade for Patty's sake. And even though it's previously explored the twins are horrible to Homer, Selma actually shares some very sweet moments with him over the years. Let's not forget there was Homer who pretended to be her husband so she could adopt a baby, and said how much she admired Homer's parenting. I just couldn't cut it today. Also, turning back the clocks a little bit, when Marge was pregnant with Bart, Homer felt unworthy and left. Patty and Selma then came across Homer working at a fast food restaurant and vowed never to tell Marge so the two wouldn't get back together. But seeing just how distraught Marge was, Selma tells her the truth. I've got two and a half words for you. Gulp and blow. Even though she was instructed by Patty not to. We just saw him be stupid. <sighs> now to compare, the only time Patty and Homer have really got on is when they try and split up Selma and Grandpa. It was one of the only relationships she's had where it's actually been real. It seems Patty only works for personal selfish gains to keep Selma firmly under her thumb. Now, I feel that if Patty wasn't around, Selma would be a lot warmer and kinder and better integrated into the Simpsons family without the looming black cloud that is Patty. And so healing a part that Selma is missing, the love of a family. Building a stronger relationship with the Simpsons would mean forming a strong bond with her nieces and nephew that may have made her feel a bit less empty over not being a mother. Although she spends her days at the DMV and evenings with her sister binge watching MacGyver, Selma dreams of so much more, longing for a life and a family to share it with. She's had a string of hopeless relationships, and although each one failed, she started with the best intentions, just searching for love in this lonely, lonely world. Oh, you look just like your picture. Selma has been married no less than five times, and collects surnames like their Infinity Stones. My name's already Selma Bouvier Twilliger Hutz McClure. Her first marriage was to the villainous, rake-loving sideshow Bob. <laughs> With no luck finding love amongst the law-abiding, Selma signs up for the prison pen pal program, meeting Bob. As soon as he was released from prison, a proposition of marriage occurred. That man is scum. Then call me Mrs. Scum. But it turns out that it was only after her for her money, and attempts to blow her up during their honeymoon in a bid to get the moolah. You tried to kill me. I want a separation. As it turns out, attempted murder didn't stop our girl Selma from finding love. When washed up actor Troy McClure is ordered to get an eye test from the DMV, he meets Selma, who he then asks to take out in exchange for passing his test. But as it turns out, Troy isn't really romantically interested in Selma, as his tastes lay lying in the seabed amongst the fishies. 
And so Troy asks Selma to marry him, not only for the benefit of his career, but so Selma can have whatever she wants. Selma agrees, believing that a sham marriage is better than no marriage at all. But when Troy suggests adding a baby to their fake family, this is where she draws the line. But bringing a child into a loveless family is something I just can't do. Craving some authenticity in her life, Selma leaves. She also had a brief off-screen marriage with Lionel Hutz and a relationship with Abe Simpson, of all people, which, like I mentioned earlier, Homer and Patty tried to break up, but the two broke up after realising the age difference between the two was a bit of an issue. <sighs> I guess I'm gonna be alone forever. Selma's most recent relationship was with Fat Tony, when Selma insults the boss at the DMV, his goon kidnapped her and asks her what body part she wants to have cut off first, to which she replies her love handles and excess fat, demanding liposuction instead. I don't know whether to knock you on your kisser or kiss you on your knuckers. <laughs> After becoming a skinny legend, the two hit it off and before long he puts a ring on it and Selma was happy living the life of a mob boss's wife. And he wasn't the first criminal she'd married after all, but Selma is shocked to learn that Fat Tony is already married and she is only the mistress. As we can see, Selma has a lot of love to give and has always wished for her own family. And after a string of failed dates, including one with Mole Man, she considered ditching the middleman and just having a child of her own. To dip her toes into parenthood, she took her niece and nephew to Duff Gardens and it didn't go too well. While on the little land of Duff Ride, Bart does Lisa to drink the mysterious brown liquid. When Selma encourages her to drink it, Lisa hallucinates and goes on a psychedelic trip. Bart has to be rescued from a ride and Lisa is soon found swimming nude in the fermentarium. I am the Lizard Queen! Feeling beaten and defeated, Selma has a talk with Homer about the difficulties of parenthood. So Selma is put off motherhood for a short while and decides to look after something with a bit less maintenance, her aunt's pet iguana Jub Jub. The tender way Selma looks after the lizard just goes to show how much love Selma has to give in one of the most wholesome scenes of the entire Simpsons show. Later on, when Selma is taken to hospital, she is informed that she has entered menopause, which means she can no longer become pregnant. But now I'm afraid I'll grow old alone. After struggling to adopt locally, Lisa suggests adopting a child from China. But since the Chinese government only allowed married couples to adopt, Selma puts Homer as her hubby, much to his surprise. No! When Selma meets baby Ling for the very first time, she is smitten and instantly takes to being a mother. But when Homer and Selma's marriage is discovered to be a sham, Ling was taken away. But seeing just how much Selma loved Ling, the adoption agent gives Ling back. And Selma Bouvier has been Ling's mother ever since. Whoever said that there's no such thing as continuity in The Simpsons? Throughout the years, Selma has constantly been beaten down by life and by those around her. And honestly, I think a lot of it has to do with Patty. In her dating life, she has formed a very hard exterior to protect herself as she is very vulnerable underneath. And I think the most tragic thing about her is her love life is made the butt of the joke, which would be funny if she played some part in it. But she doesn't, she gets shafted from one hopeless man to another, with each one getting more and more ridiculous, which is so tragic in itself. Selma, unlike her cold sister, is hopeful, loving and caring. She has gone through the motions of separating herself from her sister to get what she wants, a family and has therefore had the most consistent character arc out of everyone in the entire show. Yes, she may still live in a one bedroom apartment with Patty, but we'll be rooting for her to break out and become her own woman. Thanks so much for watching today's video, and I'd like to give a special thanks to Mato Express for helping me out with this video. Please go and subscribe to his channel. I have linked his channel in the description below. And finally, I'd like to thank my newest Flying Hellfish member, Shivendra Saklani. Thank you so much for helping support the channel, it really does mean a big, big amount to me. Thank you. 
And of course, we've got the whole crew here too. Meet the other Flying Hellfish members. We have Timothy, who else but Zane, Liam, One Drama Boy, Steve, Charlie, Sean, Andre, Stefan, Robert, Ashley, Glenford, Devin, Gadrag, Stephen, Edward, Anthony, Nicola, Jeffrey, Dominic, Cody, Jacku Star, Gameboss49, Chaz, Jeff, Gil, Shadu, Murray, Paul, Henry, Frank, Lucas Z, Omar, Eric, Thomas88, Dave, Samantha, Rally, Lauren, Alexander, Daniel, Charlie, Brendan, Bendy, Jessica, and Shivendra. 